Getting started with Cask Plugin Management 2.0. Here's today's starting point. I have a CloudBee CI Operations Center and two client controllers. They are all version 2.440.3.7. Now with this release, there is a new feature within Configuration as Code or Cask that makes plugin management easier than in previous versions of Configuration as Code. Let's go and take a look at the documentation for that. A link to this documentation is down in the description. And what we see here is starting with the first April 2024 release, Cloud BCI Cask improves and changes how plugins are managed using Cask. There's a key change in how this happens though. What happens is these changes require the use of API version two in the bundle YAML file. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at an example of a system that's already set up using Cask and we'll go through the process of installing a plugin first, still using API version one, and then we'll see that a plugin will fail because we haven't gone to using API version two, and then we'll work through a couple other examples beyond that. Now let's go ahead and review the core changes to what makes the difference between API version one and API version two. The first one is plugin dependencies management for both CloudBees Assurance program cap plugins, also non-cap plugins. We can also specify alternative download locations for non-CAP plugins. And then also, unlike API version one, we can have both CAP and non-CAP plugins all in plugin YAML. We don't have to worry about plugin catalog YAML at all. And then finally, there is a CASC plugins report with all the effective installed plugins and their versions in a JSON format. So there's a table right here at the very top of the page that compares both API version two and API version one. Now we're not gonna read through all these, but I'm gonna show you how this works. Again, I'm assuming that you already have configuration as code set up for your controllers. Now, if we go ahead and scroll down just a little bit more, let's take a look at how we can actually install plugins. We can install from the update center. That's normal. That's the way that we've always installed plugins in the past. We can also install from the local file system. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, I could always do that by just uploading the plugin. That's not what this means. We'll take a look at that in a moment. We can also install from a URL using credentials. And then finally, if we wanted to, we could use a Maven GAV or group artifact inversion coordinate from a Maven repository. So let's take a look at a couple of the examples that are shown here. First off, the file system location. That references this bullet right here. All I have to do is specify the file schema. Now I can use either file, I can use HTTP, or I can use HTTPS. Now, if I was going to use a download using credentials, I could reference the credential ID. And finally, if I'm going to be using a Maven GAV, I would specify the group ID, the artifact ID if I wanted, and also the version number. Also, I would be specifying the repository ID. Now for this video, this would go on for a very long time. So if you're interested in seeing an example of how to set up Maven GAV using either Artifactory or Nexus, leave a comment down in the description. For this video, I have a sample repository that has the configuration for my controllers. So let's take a look at that real quick. What I have is I have a CC1 controller and a CC2 controller. We can see that here in our operation center. We're gonna be focusing on making changes for only CC1 in this video. So if we take a look inside of CC1, what I have is I have a bundle YAML file, a Jenkins YAML file, and plugins. So I've already done the basics for creating the bundles for these controllers. So within bundle, I still have API version one, and I'm only referencing Jenkins and plugins. That's all I need for right now. If we take a look at plugins, here are all the plugins that are currently installed on the CC1 controller. Now let's assume for a moment that I want to go ahead and install the cross-team collaboration plugins needed for my controller. If I was to take a look at the documentation for that, this is a CloudBees proprietary plugin that allows us to pass messages between different controllers or even within the controller itself. The two plugins that are required are Pipeline Event Step and Notification API. Both of those are required. We have an optional plugin. I'm not gonna be concerned about that right now. I just want to show you how I would reference this plugin. Now in this case, this is how this would work even with API version one. If I reference pipeline event step, it has a dependency on notification API. Let's go over and double check within our controller and see how pipeline event step shows up within our plugins panel. We'll go to manage Jenkins, we'll go to plugins. If we look at available plugins and search for again, pipeline event step, we'll see that pipeline event step 
is a proprietary plugin for Cloud VCI. So what we're going to do is we're going to reference this plugin. I know that the reference for this is pipeline event step. So let's go ahead and go over to our plugin YAML file. I'm going to edit this file and all the changes that I'm going to be making in this video are all going to go to the very bottom of the configuration. So I'm going to say ID pipeline event step. Now, before I commit the changes, let's go back. We can see that the plugin is currently available for installation on CC1. It is not currently installed. We are under available. So let's go ahead and click back on plugins. So we're back to a nice clean page. Let's go back over here to our repository and click on commit changes and commit changes one more time. Now we'll give the controller just a few moments to upgrade. Let's go ahead and go over into our log file and see what's happening within the log file. What we can see here is we received a log entry saying plugins to install validator. All plugins are present in the envelope or are in the plugin catalog. So what does that mean to us? Well, let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. Let's take a look at available plugins again. We'll search for pipeline event step. We can still see that it's not installed yet. Well, I forgot to bump the version within my bundle YAML file. So let's go ahead and go back over into our configuration. We'll click on bundle. Let's go ahead and edit this file and we'll change the four to a five. Click on commit. Now let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. We'll go to Manage Jenkins and let's go down to our Cask Export and Update panel. Let's click on Bundle Update. What we're going to see here is there is a new version available of the bundle. That's five. That's the five that we just created. Let's click on the differences. We'll see the differences that we have here. We went from four to five and it gave us a different checksum. All of that's good. Let's go ahead and go back into our configuration here. What we can see is that we could either reload the configuration, which would be valid. I could go ahead and do a reload because these plugins have never been loaded before. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and do a safe restart to apply version five. So we'll click on safe restart and click on restart again. While we are waiting for the restart, let's take a look at our log. We can see that the log has started back up. And what we can see here is that we have two lines listed. We have a requested install of notification API and also a notification for installing pipeline event step. So the only line that we specified was pipeline event step, but it went ahead and installed notification API because notification API is a dependency of pipeline event step. So if we go ahead and go back over to our controller as it's finishing starting up. Now, if we go into manage Jenkins and plugins, when we go to installed plugins now, and we search for pipeline event step, we can see that pipeline event step has now been installed on this controller. If we go back over to available, we're not going to see pipeline event step because it's already been installed. Now, what I just showed you works for both API version one and API version two. I only needed to specify the single plugin and all the dependencies were brought in for that plugin, but that plugin and its dependencies were all cap related plugins. What if I have a plugin that I want to install that is not part of cap? Let's go ahead and just search for request. And what we'll see here is I have a plugin called Clobby's Request Filter. If we notice right above Clobby's Request Filter, we also have a Clobby's Quiet Start plugin. Notice that that plugin is proprietary. Clobby's Request Filter is not proprietary. And I also don't see the verified badge. And that means that this plugin is not part of CAP. So what do we need to do in order to install Request Filter? Well, again, we just need to have the ID of the plugin and let's add that to our plugin YAML file. So let's go ahead and go back over into our repository. We'll go to plugins. We'll edit this file. We'll scroll to the bottom and right below our entry for pipeline event step, which I messed up. I put it above because I didn't scroll all the way down. Now I'm at the very bottom. I'm pasting in cloudbees request filter. That's the plugin ID for cloudbees request filter plugin. Let's go ahead and commit the changes. And before I actually make the changes to the bundle, Let's go over to our log file and see what's going on. What we'll see in our log file is that we have a warning. Some plugins cannot be installed. Plugin Cloudbees request filter is not in the Cloudbees assurance program or in applicable plugin catalogs. Remember, we haven't set up a plugin catalog that's necessary in API version one. But let's go ahead and make our change to bundle YAML to change the API version to two and go ahead and bump our version number again. So we'll go back over into our repository, select bundle, Let's edit this. 
The first thing we're going to do is change the 1 to a 2 for API version. And then for the version of the bundle, we're going to change it from 5 to 6, just incrementing by 1. Let's go ahead and click on Commit Changes. Let's go ahead and go back over to our log file and see what happens. We can still see the old log here. I'll hit Enter a couple of times. Now notice we just received another message. But it says all plugins can be installed. So by changing that API version from 1 to 2, and also bumping our version, we no longer get this message about CloudBee's request filter not in cap. It now says everything can be installed. Well, let's go back over to our controller. And let's go back into our cask panel. And if we click on bundle update, what we'll see is the bundle is ready and available with version 6. Now, I could just do a reload configuration. Personally, I prefer restarting the controller, regardless of whether or not the plugin will actually load automatically. Anytime I install new plugins, I just like to restart. That's me. You might feel okay just by hot loading it yourself. Either way is okay. I'm gonna go with safe restart. So let's click on safe restart and restart. Now, much like what we did last time, let's go ahead and go back into our log file and watch what happens as the controller starts back up. What we can see here is that we have requested the install of CloudBee's request filter. So this is the key part to this. We did not have to add in a plugin catalog file to our bundle for a non-cap plugin. Now that we've gone to API version two, we're able just to add that plugin directly to Plugins YAML. So let's go ahead and go back into our controller and let's verify that the plugin has been installed. We'll go to Manage Jenkins, Plugins, and under Install Plugins, what we have, if we search for CloudBee's request filter, we can see that it's installed now. So in the first example, it worked with either API version one or version two because we were specifying a plugin that was already in cap. That was pipeline event step. In the second example, we installed a non-cap plugin. That's the CloudBees request filter. Initially, when API version one was still set, the plugin was not able to be installed. When we changed API version one to API version two, it says, oh, great, we can go ahead and install this plugin. And it did. Now, finally, I want to take a look at installing a plugin that is not part of cap, and I want to install a specific version of a plugin. When we installed CloudBee's request filter, it gave me the latest version. For my example, I want to install an older version of pipeline utility steps. And in fact, I want to install version 2.16.1. Notice the latest version is 2.16.2. In my example, I'm assuming that I had tested out 2.16.2 before. I was having problems. No, there's no problems with it, but I was having problems. So I decided to go back to 2.16.1. So how do I add that in now into my plugin YAML file? So let's go ahead and go back over into our configuration. We'll go to plugins. Let's go and go into edit mode. I'm going to scroll really this time all the way to the bottom. And when we take a look at the very bottom of this page, we can see that we've had our pipeline event step, our CloudBees request filter. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ID pipeline utility steps. And then I'm going to specify the URL for that plugin. So I'm going to say URL colon. Let's go back over to our pipeline utility steps. I'm going to copy the direct link and I'm going to go back over into my repository and just paste in the specific URL for 2.16.1. So ID URL. Remember when we were taking a look at the documentation, we can specify ID and URL. Now, since this is a publicly facing website, I don't need credentials. So I have specified pipeline utility steps and the URL for the specific version that I want to install. So let's go ahead and scroll up, commit the changes. If we were to go ahead and go back over into our log file, what we'll see in a moment is an entry stating that all plugins can be installed. So now I'm ready to go back over into my bundle and let's make the change just to the version from six to seven. So I'll edit, change the version from six to seven. We've already set the API version to two, so there's no need to make any changes there. We'll click on commit. If we go ahead and go back over into our controller, let's go and take a look at our cask panel. If we go to bundle update, now we can see there's a new version, version seven, which is the last change that we just made. Let's go ahead and click on safe restart and finally restart one more time. If we were to take a look again at our log file, what we're going to see is that we see a request to install the plugin pipeline utility steps to version 2.16.1. Remember, that's the exact version of the plugin that we specified to have installed. So if we go ahead and go back over into our controller and we take a look at our installed plugins, we can see now under updates, we actually see a version ready for update. Remember, the latest version at the time of recording was 2.16.2. It sees that 2.16.1 is installed. So just to verify it one more time, install plugins, 
we look for a utility, we'll see that the pipeline utility steps is installed at 2.16.1. But remember I said at the beginning of this section of the video that I had found a problem in my setup with 2.16.2. But if somebody was to see this, they may say, oh, let me go ahead and upgrade it to 2.16.2 because they weren't aware of any of the problems that I had had specifically with 2.16.2. How can I pin this version to make sure that I don't even see this upgrade available to me? This is where we can now reintroduce our plugin catalog to actually make sure that this plugin upgrade is not even offered to us. So how are we going to do that? Let's go ahead and go back into our repository. Notice I have outside of the structure here, I have plugin catalog original. This is just a boilerplate for me to get started. What this tells me is that I'm setting up a plugin catalog, but most importantly, I'm saying for pipeline utility steps, the only version that I want to use is 2.16.1. I'm able to pin this version to 2.16.1. Now this plugin is not part of CAP, so I'm able to pin a specific version. If this plugin was part of CAP, then I cannot do pinning of a plugin. Pinning only applies to non-CAP plugins. I'm going to go ahead and copy the values that are here. Let's go back into CC1 and let's create a new file called plugin catalog YAML. Plugin catalog YAML. And inside the body, I'm pasting in everything I copied from the original file. Let's go ahead and commit the changes. But I also need to make one more change, and that's to the bundle file, because I've now added in a reference to plugin catalog. So I'll go ahead and click on bundle. We'll edit this. I'm going to go ahead and add in my reference to plugin catalog. And then I'm also going to go ahead and change the version from seven to eight. Let's commit the changes. Now let's go ahead and go back over into our controller. We'll go back to cask, bundle update, and we can see there's a new version, that's version eight. If we were to compare the changes, we're going to see that it's seven to eight. We can also see the entry for plugin catalog. So let's go ahead and go back to the bundle update. Now, before we click on safe restart, let's go take a look again at what we're expecting. We'll go to CC1, Manage Jenkins, Plugins. Notice we currently are being offered 2.16.2 to upgrade to. What we're expecting after this bundle applies is that we're no longer going to see the 2.16.2 offered for us to upgrade. Let's go ahead and go back to Manage Jenkins, Bundle Update, and let's click on Safe Restart. Now that the controller is back up, let's go back into Manage Jenkins, Plugins, and what we can see here is that we are no longer being offered the upgrade to 2.16.2. Again, that's because that we have specified within our plugin catalog YAML that we only want version 2.16.1 of pipeline utility steps. So by pinning this specific version to this plugin, since the controller knows that that version is already installed, we're not gonna be making any kind of new offers to upgrade to any later versions of that plugin. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.